Shalom everyone and welcome to a special video with me, Batya in Svat, about converting. If you've ever thought about converting to the Jewish faith, that's what I want to talk about here. Um, so before we get started, let I, I have to give a disclaimer that I don't dabble in this. Uh, I don't have anything to do with this, that I'm not looking um, or <laughs> trying to persuade anyone to convert to Judaism in any way. This video is if it's something that you've already maybe personally felt for yourself, that you've been considering or even wondering about, um, where one might get started if they had the rats on, the will and the intention to do that. Um, as almost everyone would know and agree, the Jewish nation is, <laughs> we're not missionaries. We are not out there trying to get people to be Jewish or to convert to Judaism um, in any way. Uh, there's a place for Jews and a specific service that comes along with that obligation. And then there are the nations of the world who also have a covenant with God and are fulfilling their purpose. And that um, in no way would one need to convert to Judaism to save their soul or something as, you know, as gross uh, as that, that um, we're not out there searching. We're not out there uh, trying to convince anybody to do specific religious avoda work. So, first things first, if you're serious, you're going to have to look into your community to see if there is a Jewish community there. And yes, even though I don't like the word orthodox or orthodoxy, you have to look for a kosher orthodox rabbi because only kosher conversions are acceptable uh, or are even really binding in any way. So that's the first thing. Now, many people out there, because we're operating on the World Wide Web, you might be in a place and think, well, I have absolutely no Jewish community here. You're going to find the closest one to you or you know, for a lot of people, if they, they watch um, certain rabbis on YouTube or if they use a lot of Jewish resources from certain websites, to reach out to those places if what they're teaching you feels right and good for a referral about someone near your area where you might be able to start learning seriously. The next thing is I can't emphasize this point enough in any way that you must be prepared for rejection. Anybody that's learned a little bit about what conversion to the Jewish faith entails knows that there is an obligation, I don't think that's the right word, but that when someone comes to convert to Judaism, you must reject them three times. And we get that from the story of Ruth, Hamoabiah, right, and that it's an opportunity for you to show the Jewish nation how committed you are to fulfilling the Torah. Um, this is so important because the Jewish people operate as a unit. And when there is dysfunction in one part of the body, there is dysfunction in the entire body. So Jews take the concept of a conversion so very seriously. And to be able to convert, you must also show that you take it very seriously. Um, one of those ways is that you will, and this is the hardest thing, there's a lot of people that live in really remote areas. And it's not easy to just pick up pick up your life and go to, to some place you don't know. You have family, maybe you have parents that depend on you, children that depend on you. You have a lot of things going on in your life where you live that you can't just pick up and leave. But that is something that will 
absolutely be required of you. You have to live in an orthodox, I don't like, I don't like the term orthodox, I prefer Shomer Torah, Shomer Mitzvot, someone that to the best of their ability performs mitzvot in line with the Torah as it was given. So I totally understand how that is a real problem, not to be able to pick up and leave, but to convert, there are a lot of sacrifices that will have to be made. And we live in a community. We men daven in a quorum of ten. We need each other to function. So that is really a non-negotiable. And so in your life, if you're thinking about converting, that's something that you need to take very seriously. Give it the time to see if it's a possibility for you. Now, it doesn't mean that while you are where you are, you can't start your own process and be involved in your own education. Nobody's gonna come and speed, sp spin, spoon feed it to you. You have to want to learn. And so with the amount of effort put into the learning, so will be the revelation of that knowledge, right? We know that whichever may, way a man wants to walk, Hashem will lead him in that direction. So having that said, you don't have to know everything about the Jewish faith to convert, but you have to show that you are serious and that really means knowing the fundamentals. Okay, so get a pen and a paper ready. I'm going to hit you with, uh, I think just a, an overwhelming amount of information. Right now, I'm gonna give you websites, I'm gonna give you books, and um, other ideas about how to get where you'd like to go. So again, disclaimer, I'm not trying to sell a product, but if you are interested in said product, here's some resources, Bizrat Hashem, with the help of the Lord, that might, uh, might help you um, along the way. So where do we start here? So. I hope, Bizrat Hashem, to um, put everything that I'm going to say and list here in the description box. And I hope, please God, also just in the video itself, if I'm talking about a book, maybe something can pop up with the name and the title. You know, it might be easier to find. Um, all right, let's get started now. For me, I am a list maker by trade. I love to make lists and check those lists off. Now, there are some non-negotiables, absolute fundamentals that one has to know uh, and also accept them completely for the conversion to actually even be able to take place, meaning like the 13 fundamentals of Jewish faith that when you go into the mikvah for your conversion, you have to absolutely, with all your heart, say that I believe in every tenant, every tenant here without question or reservation. Now, to show you how I got started, I collected some of the most basic things. It helps for me to write it out. So one thing I have here, is a handy dandy binder. Now, it might not be, these aren't really in order of uh, any specific purpose. Uh, that doesn't sound right. They're, no, they're not in an order. They're just general things that are important and uh, deserve attention. So in my binder here, I have a collection of some of the things I find to be most important. I wrote down you can't see here, every one of the 613 mitzvot that we have, okay? Now, you don't have to do that. It helps me remember, and <laughs> I don't remember 
all 613 mitzvahs. But you have things like this. The Concise Book of Mitzvot by the Chafetz Chaim. And this just goes through, takes you through, and you can read about them. If you're going to be commanded to keep, even though we can't possibly keep all 613 commandments now, I believe it's like 200 and something something number that we're actually able to keep. A lot of laws about the temple and the Beit HaMikdash and offerings um, were not there. May we be soon. May you give us our temple soon. So that's a good place to start with mitzvot. Just knowing what they are. Now, what else do I have in here? The laws. Give me a pen. One second. Okay, so the mitzvot. Now, the laws of Shabbos. 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 Shabbat. The, the Sabbath, the holy day that we keep holy. Um, there are a lot of things to know about Shabbat. It is a very important day. So we are refrained from 39 kinds of melachot, kinds of labor. So I made a list of the 30 kind, 30 kind, 39 kinds of labor followed up in more depth about what they specifically are and what that means. Now, you can have here, like this collection here, this is all in depth, more about a guide to the practical observance of Shabbat, three volume series. Um, this is by Rabbi Yoshua Neuwirth. Now, this isn't the only one. There are so so many books out there that can elucidate on what the actual laws of Shabbat are. Now, a question that many people ask as, as they're proceeding to get closer to wanting to convert, if they can keep Shabbat, a non-Jew is not allowed to keep Shabbat in any way. Um, though, if you are practicing to do it, it would be good to do as much as you can, but do something specifically to show that you do not keep the Shabbat. Maybe you keep everything, you try to follow along, you're learning the laws, but like we don't flick the lights on and off, so on purpose you'll flick on the, the lights to show that you are aware that you are not commanded in keeping the Shabbat and the Shabbat is only for the nation of Israel. So. There's a lot of different ideas about Shabbat and about mitzvot. So, a book that I think is the bee's knees over here. Share Halacha, The Gates of Jewish Law by Rabbi Zeev Greenwald. This is so helpful. This goes through and just breaks down the most basic overview of the laws and holidays. For me, I don't remember every single thing I have to do about every single holiday. There are a lot of commandments. Before any holiday is coming up, I pull out this beauty, open it up and review. Hey, where should my focus be? What am I doing here? What am I physically doing? And where is my spiritual work as well that's happening? This has been an invaluable resource to me um, in every single way. So again, like I said, you don't have to know everything to convert. I don't know any Jew that knows everything. <laughs> so it's about constantly reviewing and it's about really the constant wanting to review and to learn and to do these things that where does the word commandment come from mitzvah it's a connector these are tools these commandments they're not just rules we have to obey like bleh. these are connecting tools to bring us closer to our creator to tune in to refine okay so next i brought out so many books now uh, 
when we're talking about Jewish laws, there's so many different areas. Another thing, and maybe let me know in the comments if it would be helpful for you if the different, um, what, the different topics that I'm covering here, if maybe I should do like a little video specifically about kind of a general overview about that specific thing, because we're really just, we're flowing through right now. I'm just giving you a list for you to take down and then for you to do your research on is really what we're doing here. So another thing you've got to learn, <clears throat> if you're interested, super important. Laws of cash root. Now, you are going to find it less detailed here, and you're going to find it more detailed in something like this. You know what I mean? So, again, so many books available. There's so many different resources available, but you know how you have to know about milk and dairy. You have to know which foods are kosher and are not kosher how to read kosher symbols on food packages, what that means, different utensils, different knives. Um, we take our, our dishes to a mikvah and we put them in water and toggle them before we use them. Uh, there's uh, several things to start tapping into there. Okay, let's keep going. Now, Let's say, I didn't mention this, <clears throat> you have a book like this. This is a very, very general overview. Now, I, I don't know technically what's allowed to be learned and what's not allowed to be learned. So this is so important that you are in contact with uh, an orthodox rabbi that can guide you in this place because I, I cannot do that. Um, uh, the longer version, we have something called the Shulchan Aruch, and that's where it gets way more into the detail of halacha and Jewish law. So if you feel like your learning is at a place where you'd like to kick it up, you can, you can get something called the Shulchan Aruch. I have, I have it here. Even the abridged version is pretty long, so I didn't schlep it out. Um, the Shulchan Aruch. All right. Okay, the next most commonly mentioned book for converts to read, um, full of information, are by Rabbi Chaim Halevi Donin. So, this is so common. This is definitely a go-to book. It reads kind of like a textbook, but um, it's um, concise and extremely informative. So he has a, uh, several books to pray as a Jew. This is more about the actual order of our prayer service to raise a Jewish child, to be a Jew. This is, if you can only get one, this is the one. A guide to Jewish, Jewish observance in contemporary life to be a Jew. Very famous. Most rabbis, if you tell them you want to convert, are going to require you to read both of these books. So if you're serious, go ahead and get them and go ahead and do that. Now, I've slowly, slowly built up my library collection. For you, books can be expensive. Go to the library. You'd be surprised what you can find in the library. Online, a lot of information. Additionally, um, if you are consistent with showing your want to learn, you might ask your local Orthodox rabbi if you might be able to borrow books from the, the synagogue library. That's also a possibility. So, Sharei Alachot and To Be a Jew. These are absolute musts, musts, musts. Next. <clears throat> You're going to want to have, and also check with your, your rabbi about this. Oh, I, it's, where is it? Over there. Uh, a siddur, a prayer book, okay? Um, 
to just read over it, just to start getting an idea about it. Now, if you're a non-Jew, you're not allowed to say any blessing to God that says, in which you commanded us to do X, Y, Z, because you were not commanded. So it's not a true prayer. So it's good to read it, to have an idea of what it says and what um, prayer looks like, for sure. Um, again, ask your rabbi about prayer. Now, you don't need a prayer book to pray to your creator. Absolutely, right? Absolutely not. Even, even better, okay, so check out about a siddur, a prayer book. They can probably give you a, a referral to like a good one that they like, several different kinds, but they all say the same thing. <clears throat> Some have really nice commentaries at the bottom of the page that give more meaning to things, which is really nice. You have to have a good copy of the Bible, okay? If you have an old Bible that was written, even if it's the Old Testament, through a particular lens, you need to throw it in the garbage. Oh, forgive me. And get a kosher book of the Torah, the Chumash, the five books, and preferably with the Hebrew and the English. And even better, I have a few copies, I didn't bring them out, that transliterate, meaning that it shows me the English word and underneath it shows me the Hebrew word instead of just seeing the English and the Hebrew, which really helps my learning. You have to have a good copy of the Chumash. I recommend, uh, I believe it's The Living Waters by Rabbi Arya Kaplan. That's a really good translation. I'm, I'm a fan of any art scroll. I have an art scroll Chumash that I really like. And also, I mean, in general, a good copy of the Tanakh, which is really what I mean when I say Bible. I mean all books of the Bible. Um, because we use it <laughs> and it's meaningful. Um, especially because like at Shavuot, Shavuos, we read the Megillat Ruth about the story of uh, Ruth the Moabitess, right? And at Purim, we read the Megillat Esther about the story of Esther. So you, you need a whole Bible, um, for... Ideally, right. Okay. Uh, also, it, it will come in the Bible, but something you need more accessible is Tehillim, Sefer Tehillim. Now, this one is what I'm talking about, where it has the Hebrew on one side and the English on the other. Okay. I like this one because it has the trend. Uh, I said transliteration before. Some copies have that. Transliteration is where it says the word in English. It, it uses English writing for the way that you would say it in Hebrew. But this has the word under the Hebrew, which, um, as I've been learning Hebrew, has been really, really helpful for me. Okay, so a good Tanakh, right? What do we know about the Tanakh? The Tanakh is an acronym for the three parts of the Bible. It's the Torah, the first five books, the Chumash, we call it, five. And then it's the Nevi'im. Okay, and we're back. This is going to be a little choppy because it's going to be a few interruptions but we'll stay focused with the help of the Lord. So we were talking about Tanakh, Torah, the Chumash, five books of the Bible, the, uh, the Nevi'im, Tanakh, Torah, Nevi'im, the prophets. Then we have the writings, Ketuvim, which are going to be like the Song of Songs, uh, the Megillah, the Book of Ruth, the Book of Esther, uh, Proverbs, Psalms, and that kind of thing. So again, let's see, what else do I have in here? So it's important, write down the 39 books of the Bible. Divide them into the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. Break it down. Understand who these people are. Which comes to our, 
our next thing, after you have a good Tanakh, a good Chumash, where am I? Let's see. Oh, totally lost myself. Okay, great. So we're talking about know the books of the Bible, <laughs> know them, know who's living in the books of the Bible around the time when they lived, who they were, what they're all about. So what's really important about that, you need to have an understanding of Jewish history. So important. Here, I wrote a timeline, a brief timeline of Jewish history from the time of the creation of Adam to Avram, all the way through till, what's the last thing? The second Lebanon war. And then I have not updated it since 2006. Okay. You need to know I wrote down a list of the kings of Israel in order. So important. The transmission of the oral Torah, my friends, which is <laughs> super important. So, if you want a great book, really, really great, about Jewish history, boom. This was a great read. I super enjoyed this. I thought it was so well written. Um, it was a pleasure. I'm just going to say it was a total pleasure. Written by Ken Spiro. A Crash Course in Jewish History. I think absolutely every home Jew and non-Jew alike should have this book in their home and have read it. It is super. Another great resource that I really like is this book, The Jewish Fact Finder. It has things like just so, it's like a super reference book. The Ten Generations, from Adam to Noach, from Noach to Avram, who are the Imahots, the mothers, who are the patriarchs, the, the Avot, the 12 tribes, all of the prophets. Um, it's just super, super helpful. It has the list of all the Books in the Talmud, it has a list of different rabbis at different periods, the locations of the Mishkan, you know, uh, famous areas in Eretz Israel, like geographical locations, and uh, basic Hebrew words. We're going to talk more about that Hashem, in just a minute. Okay, so, Jewish history, absolute must. I'm going to put these over here. All right. Now, another thing to be learning are the, the prayer order. We talked about that, having a, a prayer book. Also, in to be a Jew and to pray as a Jew, you'll find a lot of help with the prayer order, what we're praying about, prayer obligations, how it's done, when it's done, why it's done. These things are crucial to learn. Uh, another thing uh, for people looking to convert, your blessings. Blessings are so important. And there's several blessings that you can actually make even before you're Jewish if you want to put that intention there. But a, a, a Jewish blessing is nothing to be cavalier about. It's, you're using the name of God. You must be aware of where you are. You can't say it in the bathroom. You shouldn't even think his name in the bathroom, right? We have to be mindful. We have to do it correctly. You know, it's just like technically a non-Jew can put a mezuzah, a scroll on his house, though it's totally not recommended, but only if they understand how to treat and respect these, these holy things. So one, blessings on food. There's a blessing that we make before we eat and a blessing that we make after we eat. The blessing changes depending on what we're eating. Um, 
And then there are blessings on other things, like the sanctification of the new moon, or um, blessings on uh, practices during specific holidays. Of course, that Ananji wouldn't be able to do, but you can start with making the beginning blessings over the food that you eat, just to thank Hashem for the food that you have been given. And also, there is a prayer that we say after we use the bathroom, um, which is really powerful, uh, which one can also say. And there's a super amount of resources online. One, in the Halakha book that I just mentioned to you, The Gates of Halakha, uh, it, it says the blessings and the rules of the blessing and the different categories of the blessings. Also, this is a good time. There are a handful of websites that I have found to be fountains, pure fountains of n knowledge that I owe personally such a debt of gratitude for um, their work and the work that they've, they've uh, just, it's just a blessing, all the Torah they've put together in a place. One is Aish, A-I-S-H dot com. They have a lot of great Torah resources. Another is Chabad.org, uh, a treasure trove of knowledge. You also have, I'm going to put these Bizrat Hashem also down in the description, Jewfak, J-E-W-F-A-Q. Uh, oh, I don't know if that's .com or .org. If you Google it, you should be okay. My Jewish Learning. Both of these have been amazing resources for me. And TorahAnytime.com is a website full of Torah lectures. It's probably one of the greatest collections of Torah teachings online. And it's kosher and it's good. And there's a lot, a lot of good stuff to find on there. Okay, so blessings. Now... Another thing that you have to know that you should be able to repeat. How do they say? That you know from memory are the 13 fundamentals of faith. Absolute. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and review them since it's just 13. 13 principles of faith. I believe with, okay, if you're really thinking about converting, listen to these closely and see if you can agree with all your heart without exception for every one of these ideas. This is a good measuring stick for where we're kind of holding um, in our mindset. So 13 principles of faith. I believe with perfect faith, one, God is the creator and ruler of all things. He alone has made, does make, and will make all things. Two, God is one. There is no unity like his. He alone is our God. He was, he is, and he will be. Three, God does not have a body. Physical concepts do not apply to him. There is nothing that resembles God. Four, God is first and he is last. Five, it is only proper to pray to God and to no one and nothing else, period. I believe with perfect faith all the words of the prophets are true. Seven, the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu is true. He is the chief of all prophets. Eight, the entire Torah that we have now is what was given to us by Moshe Rabbeinu. Nine, the Torah will not be changed and another one will never be given ever, 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 and never. Ten, God knows all of man's thoughts and deeds. Eleven, God rewards and punishes. 12. I believe with perfect faith in the coming of the Messiah. And 13. The dead will be brought back to life when God 
wills it to happen. It's important. Okay, what else do we have here? That's really important. Ah, this video won't be as long as I thought. Maybe I should do many videos to explain some of these concepts in, in greater detail, if it's interesting to anyone. Okay, next, for this, modesty applies to men and women. And again, modesty isn't decided by the length of a particular article of clothing. Modesty is in the way that we speak, and the way that we um, laugh, the way that we walk, the way we behave, and certainly in the lowest form, the way that we dress. So men and women have to be modest, but ladies, if you are thinking about converting, okay, you need to know about modesty. This is one of your most, 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 did I say most important services to a shim to be modest? Now, there are a lot of laws. Okay, here's a book. Now, this book, some say it's kind of intense. It might be overwhelming for some because it gets into... Wow, that sounds kind of ominous. No, I don't mean it like that, but it is... It's more stringent, okay? And that level of stringency is maintained in certain communities where other communities are more lax. And again, if you have questions, ask your local Orthodox rabbi. Modesty and adornment for life. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at this thing. Jewish law and attitudes concerning modesty of dress and conduct. I found some very interesting and beautiful things in here myself. I'm not on the level of all of this. Some of this is, I'm just not on the level. But just because we're not on the level, doesn't mean that we can't read and learn and want to be on that level. It's about constant learning. So along with modesty, we also have to familiarize ourselves with laws of touch um, and how different sexes interact with each other, which is very, very different than what goes on in the non-Jewish or secular world. And also laws about seclusion and uh, men and women being alone. So all of those things are very important. You have to learn about the holidays. Um, our yearly cycle as we go through the Torah, right? We read a portion of the Chumash, the Torah, every Shabbos, well, and Monday and Thursday and Shabbos, and we're continually going through it. That's why you need a good copy of a Tanakh to follow along and read this portion of the Bible every week because if, if one, Halila, were to think that we are learning about something that happened a couple thousand years ago. This is a mistake. These things that we're learning at this particular time are happening now. It is connected. This part of the Torah is specifically connected to this part of our lives now. It's very meaningful. So you need to be on top of reading your Parsha, your portion of the Bible, every week to follow what's going on. And that includes holidays. Our holidays are not just celebrations. They mark specific events that we're called to remember all year round, all the time. So you need to get, ah, I don't have it here. Let me make a note. The Book of Our Heritage is a three volume collection. It's incredible. It's written by Rav, is written by Rav Eliyahu Tov. I'm going to put more information, Bezrat Hashem, on the screen or in the description. Book, Book of Our Heritage. 
You can find a lot of books about specific holidays. Um, and also just learn about the holidays individually. It's a very, very important, um, the holidays. Okay. Ooh, there was something else I was going to say about the learning of the holidays. Hmm. Missed it. Okay. Now, what else? Next, and lastly, just on the checklist, okay, is the mikvah and the laws of family purity. This is going to affect a husband and a wife. A good book I recommend about that, I'm a big fan of Arya Kaplan, is going to be The Waters of Eden, The Mystery of the Mikvah, okay? by Arya Kaplan. This is good. There's a lot of good books. There's another one I have. Mm. Distracted. This is great. It's a good place to start. All right, and back again. You don't know because you're seeing all the videos smushed together. All right, okay, where were we? Sorry about the interruptions and getting distracted. We were talking about the mikvah the family purity laws. So you're going to want to search about family purity laws. Extremely important. Okay. So now that we've done that, I want to talk about Hebrew. This is, I think, one of the most difficult things. Um, having to learn an entirely new language to perform the functions of a Jew it can be very intimidating, okay? Um, so we're going to get into that. But before we go, do, before we go, everybody, before we do, I want to talk about, I can't remember, but I believe that it was either on jufac.com or org. I'll have to check because I'll put it in the description. And my Jewish learning, I found a list of questions kind of to test your Jewish knowledge, and this, what, whoever made this, God should bless you a million times because even people born Jewish, even Jews that are religious should just look over this and see if they can answer every single question. They won't be able to. Many, even most, but some of them, some of the questions aren't yes or no answers or clear cut answers. It's about um, your answer and your ideas and your thoughts. So go and check both of those sites See if maybe you can find this. Also, let me know in the comments if you, if you would be interested and in maybe we did like a, a Jew trivia show in the sense that like we take a couple of questions each time and we read them and then we talk about them or even just read them and you can kind of test yourself. Like it'll be a, like a review for yourself as you learn. So like some examples. I'm going to read a few from each page so you can get an idea of the, the, the amazing diversity of these questions. How many times did the Jewish people build up? Sorry, English. The English! How many temples did the Jewish people have? Who built them? Who destroyed them? When were they destroyed? How many biblical books did David write? Name 10 prophets. Um... And tell me the difference between the written law and the oral, oral law. Uh, tell me about Rashi. Tell me about Rabbi Akiva. Tell me about, um, name the 12 tribes. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, tell me about the term Olam Abba. Uh, who wrote the 13 articles of faith? What is a Yetzirah? What is a Yetzir Tov? Tell me about the term tikkun olam. Men, do you shave? How do you shave? Because it's important. Tell me about the, significant, the significance of wearing a prayer shawl. Women, can a woman make her own kiddush? How often do you daven as a woman? How long should your sleeves be? Are women obligated in Kriyat Shema? Uh, questions about family purity. 
Um, tell me about the terms nida and tahor. What is the Jewish attitude towards birth control? Um, what must be done when a woman is anticipating her monthly cycle? And there's so I'm just reading a handful. Blessings on food. Tell me the blessing on pineapple. Tell me the blessing on rice. Tell me the blessing on a banana. Tell me on the blessing on water. Tell me the blessing on, on grapes and a list of different foods and what their pre-blessing is and what their after-blessing is. Um, do you say a blessing when you put on new clothes? What does Shechianu mean? What, is the, what does the term mitzvah mean? How many positive and negative mitzvot are there? What is shatnitz? What are the rules regarding handling kosher wine? Why do we have mezuzahs? What is Loshan Hara? What is Kibud Ave'em? What is Avodah Zara? What does it mean to be Yotze? Random questions about Jewish marriage, Jewish mourning. Why are mirrors covered in a house of mourning? What is the Hebrew word for a Jewish funeral? Kashrut. What does kosher mean? What does glat kosher mean? How do you kosher a liver? Um, what do you call the symbols on food? What does parv mean? Tell me about the term shmita. What do you do before you start a fast? What are you not allowed to touch on Shabbos? What does mukse mean? Name the five mitzvot of Purim. What is a mishloach manot? I'm reading like three or four in each section. Okay, so there is like so much to be learned here. It's so incredible. So let me know if maybe doing a video talking about a few of these each time is something that might be interesting slash helpful to you. I think it's wonderful. A wonderful overview. Again, Hashem should just bless whoever took the their sweet personal time to put all of these things together. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to put this back in my notebook. Next. What else did I want to talk about? Okay, now let's talk about Hebrew. This is so hard. I'm going to have to pause. I want to go get my copy of the Tanakh and the Chumash that I use. Okay, so Hebrew. Now, there's two prongs to learning Hebrew. One, there's modern Hebrew that if you come to visit Israel, you're going to speak, you're going to use in daily life. There's biblical Hebrew. And between the two of them, there is, I mean, a pretty big umbrella where if you understand one, you can understand a lot of the other, though. It's not exactly the same. That should be known. So first I want to tell you about learning just the most basic words, right? When a child is learning a new language, we learn the things that we most need to learn. Colors, numbers, basic food, days of the week, these things, right? So for that, one, you need to get a dictionary. You need a Hebrew dictionary. This is one I have. It's okay. Oxford English Hebrew, Hebrew English Dictionary. Sometimes I find this hard to use because I'm looking for a word in a verb tense that's not listed. Its root word is listed, so sometimes I have a hard time using this. Although if I just hear a word or I want to know how to say a specific word, this. Also, you have Google Translate. That's also really helpful. Um, ah, get a little like phrase book as if you were traveling to Israel. This is a really old school one, but I have this in a couple languages and it actually has helped me on my travels. I mean, not so much in Hebrew because I just moved to Israel, but when I was traveling around the world in different countries, um, I have this in other language. It was really, really helpful. And I found that the pronunciations, can you see? were pretty accurate, actually. So that's helpful. So this, you learn how to say just really basic things. Start learning the most basic things. Also, there's some really great apps that can help you, okay? 
Like I, I had an app that it was biblical Hebrew flashcards and I would just sit there and review them over and over. I also bought a pack of flashcards that I would review those. I'm really into flashcards. Okay. Um, also, ah, okay. This is some good stuff. Pay attention if you're, if you're really looking to like kick up your Hebrew game. This is super. English Hebrew by subject. It helps you learn the words that are useful or most used by you. Like one example, you want to know about the weather? Boom. Everything. Everything. Can you even see? Am I, sh am I being ridiculous here? I like that. It helps me organize my ideas. Hannah Paris. I'm going to put that also in the description. This is one of my super favorite things. This has helped me so much. Webster's New World Hebrew Dictionary Transliterated. Hebrew is written in a totally different, again, so learning basic things. Before you learn how to read, you need to learn the letters. You need to learn the name of the letter, the order of the letters, sing the alpha, alphabet song. You need to know the sounds that they make like momish from the level of a child. So a lot of times I have a hard time uh, pronouncing a Hebrew word. This shows me how to, how to say it. That really helps me. So what I do with this is I pick a letter and then I just start reading through it. And what often happens is I'll find a word that I hear all the time but never knew what it meant. And when I know what a word is, I highlight it. And then I just keep reviewing. And my goal is that someday this entire dictionary will be yellow, word by word. Now, this might be silly, but this is a great book to start with, especially if you have kids. Please start teaching your children Hebrew. I mean, it's the most important language on the planet. The Torah was given in Hebrew. That's important. Okay. This first thousand words in Hebrew, best ever, super cute pictures, very handy and good pronunciation. How cute. How cute is that? Great for kids, great for adults. Get this. This is super. Okay, now, enough about regular Hebrew. I want to start getting into biblical Hebrew. Even better. Okay, so, I told you, you need to get a, a good uh, translation with a Torah, Jewish, kosher perspective. This is the Chumash that I use, my big one. I have several small ones. But this is good. As you can see, look. Oh, Hashem, let me handle this gently. Okay. Look at all this information they're giving you down here, right? And then the Hebrew's on one side, the English is on the other. It's nice. Okay. That's good. So I can't totally read the Homish in Hebrew. My Hebrew is not on that level. So to help bring it up on that level, say I have this. This is not the, all of the Torah. This is just the first book, Bereshit, not Genesis, just saying. And this has the word under. Now, I really, we have, to, we have to be so respectful of these books. If you, I think if you go back to um, my prayer series, I talk a lot of different things about holy books and how we treat them. Um, but this has the word under, so it can help me learn it. And then you'll see in pencil, very gently, I've written how to say that word so I can read it more smoothly. Uh, and that's okay. That's okay. If you're really fickle about your books, you might not do it. But like, I wouldn't make notes in this one, but like, this is for my learning. I really like this. Yeah. Okay. And then you know, get a whole copy of the Tanakh, 
This is all the books, right? This is the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. Boom. We even have to be mindful about the order in which we set them. So that is another good option. And lastly, you know, maybe if uh, you kind of need um, a more immersed language learning situation and you don't really have access in the kind of places that you live, I, when I started, I used Rosetta Stone for Hebrew and it helped me a lot, especially with pronunciation and just hearing it because there's so many sounds in Hebrew that I find as a native English speaker, very difficult, <laughs> very difficult and unusual, specifically as famously known as the <laughs> kind of sound. I always put too much or too little. It's still definitely a work in progress. Okay, I think that I have given quite a bit of information to start with. These are the fundamentals, the most basic thing that you must, without question, have an overview on. These are the basic things that you need to know to be able to start growing from that place. You know, you don't have to be perfect and know everything to go into the mikvah and certainly when one comes out of the mikvah, they're not going to be perfect. Uh, so it's not about knowing everything. It's about being completely committed to the Torah and having your service to God be completely immersed in his laws and his Torah. That's the, that's the biggest that's the biggest thing, you know. Why is conversion so hard? Because it's very serious. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Jewish nation is a single unit. And when there is dysfunction in one part of that unit, um, it reverberates throughout the rest of the body. And so it's so hard because the, the consequences or the ramifications are so absolutely great. That's why it's so real and it's so serious. You know, if it sounds like a lot, all of this, know that it is. It is a lot. It is not for the faint of heart. Bechlal, not at all. But it's so worth it, uh, in my opinion just for me and my relationship with God and keeping Torah and mitzvot. I love the Torah. I make videos about Midrash and I just like, it makes my heart want to explode. It, it touches such a, a deep chord within me, you know, and if it sounds like too much to you, you're in the wrong business. Okay. Um, having said that, I just want to finish with, if you are serious, you need to be in touch with a kosher rabbi. You need to be looking for a community without exceptions. There's just no excuses. I'm not saying that it's easy and you don't have valid reasons where you, why you can't pick up and move. But if you are serious that um, in the end, that's where it's going to have to go. Um, that you're going to have to be a self-starter. A uh, problem that I find with a lot of people that want to come and convert is that they'll start with like a gusto, you know, they'll be super passionate and crazy about it. And as it's not going their way or they're not received the way that they want to be received, they just like, forget it, I don't need this. You know, it's only the people that say, no matter what, this is what I want and I'm just going to pursue this, whether it takes me one year, two year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, all of my life, to reach this place. And that's really the level of commitment. So please, if you can, leave me in the comments um, if you would like maybe some videos about that, um, all those different questions. That could be really interesting and educational. Um, or if you're interested in one specific topic that I mentioned today that it's very important to learn one of those many things on the checklist just to review it's uh basic halacha 
whether it's in this book I mentioned or the Shulchan Aruch, the different websites that I gave you to go and look at. It is having a good kosher Bible for use of study in your home. Um, blessings, prayers, the 13 fundamentals of faith, holidays, kashrut, the laws of eating kosher food, right? Shabbat, the laws of Shabbos, how we keep and honor the Shabbos. Modesty, the mikvah, Jewish history, and uh, of course, really building our Hebrew, okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. Although in many ways, because it's not my field, I don't help people convert, I don't really do that. I'm just giving you a starter kit if it's something that seems meaningful to you. Uh, and again, I just have to say this. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know about me that I'm very passionate about the Noahide laws, the, the Sheva Mitzvot, the seven universal laws. I don't believe in any way that someone needs to be a Jew to have a deep and meaningful and important and worthwhile relationship with their creator or to be righteous. Uh, I don't believe that <laughs> like at all. Um, so, you know, to be a good person, you don't have to be a Jew. That's not what it's about. It's about if you decide that it's meaningful to you and you have a yearning, a rat's on, a will to want to keep these mitzvahs, to connect with God in that way. That's about you and where you are and what is meaningful to you and what you want to do. But that is, it's not, it's not about who's righteous, who's more righteous, who's chosen, who's loved, who's this kind of, um, this kind of, these kind of ideas are very gross and offensive uh, in, <laughs> in my most humble opinion. All right, my dear friends, uh, we covered a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of information. I really hope with all my heart that some of it was helpful to you and that if you do want it, it will help you get on the right path to pursue that. Okay. Um, have a great day, and it is always so good to thank God.